Hello again. Sorry for the wait. I had to wait for some parts to arrive longer than I thought I'd have to. Okay. Uh, first, a quick disclaimer. Obviously, there's many different opinions out there of how people would go about doing certain things. People have different ideas of how to model certain things. So if you disagree with me or you think you've got a better idea, that's great. I've got no problem. Um, second thing is, obviously, just be safe. Don't be silly. I don't always do things the so-called official way. And the other thing is... Um, there's going to be lots of talking in this video, so if I start to bore you, you'll have to forgive me for that. Or if I'm te teaching you to suck eggs, again, you'll have to forgive me for that. I want to take this with the assumption that people don't know anything. Um, so then it can hopefully, you know, basically I'll teach people what things like this is. In case you don't know. So, um, just to recap then. Um, obviously you've got the focusing issue still. Went over this before, it's since been smoothed down. It's had a coat of a uh, Tamiya primer and I've gone over it again a few more times. It's a lot smoother than it was. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. The underside in comparison is rather knobbly, if, if it will focus that is. Come on. There we go. Back to the top. And I've got a FUD K2 that arrived, and I'm very, very pleased with it. Much smoother. This hasn't had any primer yet at all. It's been soaked in white spirit for about an hour. It's had a slight rub down and it's already smoother than that one. So, and this one to play it's a lot thinner too. Much better, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay. Um, parts list. Um, where do we start with this one? Okay. Again, wheels has different considerations. I'm using Alan Gibson for this. When it comes to the crank pins, I should explain and show you how to do both sets. But anyway, we've got these to start with. Three foot six inch diameter, ten spoke, uh, Alan Gibson wheels for the bogies. They always come with a pinpoint axle, a not not axle, and an EM axle. If you want P4S4 wheels, you have to basically specify. But I'm going to be doing not not for this video. So you've got a set of those. Or well, two sets of them, actually. Same with these, two sets of these, driving wheels. Hang on. There we go. Six inch... Sorry, six feet diameter, 19 spoke. I think the K2s were supposed to be uh, 20 spokes, but it's a compromise so I'm happy with. You want to get yourself some of these as well. Get in focus, get... One eighth uh, bearings. The, the, the more they're actually bushes, but for some reason everybody calls them bearings. There's, I've already opened that packet. Uh, where's these? Where's these? Okay, same again for the two millimeter. Getting focus for the small wheels. Uh, same sort of thing, but two millimeter. Sometimes called straw hat bearings. You don't always need them. You can get away with them, but they can help. Uh, optional extras. Uh, you know, brake pipes and things. Various companies make them. Um, if you want to replace the printed buffers with some sprung ones, these are the wrong type, but you know, they can get various types. Spacing washers. These are, obviously you want, to, you want the size washer depending on what size axles you're using. They come in handy, and I prefer to use these sort. Get in focus. Please get in focus. There you go. Right, these are basically insulated ones, so with certain wheels you need insulated washers. And if you just buy insulated washers and forget about metal ones, it solves a problem, I find. Excuse me, so two sets of them. You, with um, the body on the underside, you notice you've got the hole here, there, that goes into the uh, smoke box saddle. Um, you can use different sizes screws and bolts for those, but these self tap perfectly. And you can take them in and put them out a million times and it's fine in both foot and whistle if it doesn't seem to matter. Okay, so 10BA. If you use a smaller size, sorry, a slightly bigger size, which would be let's be 9BA or 8BA, you can get away with it. Um, and you just have to ring the holes out a bit to accommodate, but the self tap and they're very easy to use. Okay, for um for the hand round knobs, with this particular locomotive, ideally, you need 
long hand round knobs, okay, and also medium ones. You want the long ones for the boiler, the medium one for the smoke box because the smoke box sticks out more. So if you use these in conjunction, you'll have a nice straight hand rail without sticking out anywhere. All right, crank pins. Um, these are Alan Gibson's crank pins, and again, I'll be showing you the other type as well from Markets or Romford. Okay. That's a choice. Flywheels, you have to make sure that it fits the diameter of the bit in your motor. If I could fit one, I will do. I did fit one to the prototype K2 build, so I won't be able to do it again. The only thing is, uh, you have to cut into the boiler to do so, which visually it kind of ruins things slightly, but it's not always that bad. And like any locomotive kit, whether mine or somebody else's, it's pretty standard practice to have to actually cut under, cut part of your boiler away here if you want to put a bigger motor or gearbox in, but that's up to the, you know, depends what you do. And for this video as well, I'm going to be showing at some point how to, or the, day, the next video even, build one of these, which is a high level kit, a Roadrunner Plus gearbox with this 1020 Mashima motor. Okay, they'll probably be, I'm going to be splitting these videos into series, obviously. Now, I haven't built the prototype cater with this, I built it with this plus a drive extender. So I'm going to try and fit this in. If it doesn't fit, I'll show you how to use a drive extender. Um, split pins. There's some other crank pins there, forget those. These split pins here, get in focus. You kind of need one of these for the boiler pipe. Um, or rather, that's how I've chose to do it. And these, I'm not sure what they're called because I bought them so long ago, but they're basically the washers that uh, Markets or Romford like to use. Okay. For the crank pins. So move all that. Like I said, lots of gobbing. If you haven't already got them, go in yourself, get yourself a set of these. You don't necessarily have to buy exactly what I've bought, brought, but for Marlins and Poem, you can get this roughly a tenner, eleven pounds something, number six to one to eighty, okay. And then you get to set yourself a set of these, 0.3 to 1.6 millimeters. These are more expensive because they're made out of, I think, steel rather than brass. About the same price. And with those, you need, obviously, um, a way to use them. You don't always want to get a full-blown mini drill. Go and buy yourself one of these and save yourself a lot of bother. Right, pin vise. Where the work is, you take that off. You get different sized chucks inside. Well, get in focus. Okay, depending on what drill size you want. And then you open the back up. You've got, the same, you've got the same thing there, another one. So you just swap them about as you need to. And that way, you can uh, drill things by your hand with a nice bit of control and feel what you're doing and not just <laughs> make a mess of things. So get yourself one of them. They don't cost much. Um, and one of these is essential to anybody who's building locomotive kits, brass kits, whatever. You must go and get yourself one of these. It's a one-eighth taper reamer, okay? Basically, it's thinner there, it goes fat as you go up. You need these to get the right amount of working clearance in your bushes or bearings, and also um, for preparing the holes for them sometimes. Another thing you, you will need, bear with me. Which drawer did you put it in? There you go. It's a set of standard reamers, which they've also tapered. These. This is an economy set, so they've got no handles. So I'll just struggle along, but at some point I'm going to stick a handle on them, so it's a lot easier. Okay, the various sizes. Same thing as a taper, but it's more. You need that for the gearbox. You can use uh, drills and open the holes out that way. Excuse me. But um, it's more awkward. Right, now I've already shown you the underside of that. I mentioned on the previous video to have the guard irons in. Well, on this one, I've already took the bits off. Okay, so once you took all the bits off, that's what it looks like. Get in focus and stop jumping. Okay, once you've took all the bits off, put them in a bag, right, and just forget about them. Just look after them. Don't you know? Just forget about them towards the end. Right. Uh, the chassis. 